We would like to welcome to our Holy Trinity family our newly baptized Lois Vincent, son of Neil and Brooke Flattery, Joriella, daughter of Ryan and Kylie O'Leary, Colin Andrew, son of Leo and Kate Stuckey, and our new members, John and Kathy Brandle, Roger Hansen, and Michael Leif. Welcome to the Holy Trinity Parish family. Good morning. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to the celebration of the Mass of the sixth Sunday of Easter. The opening hymn will be hymn number 501, Be Joyful Mary, hymn number 501. Please rise. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold on to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, the brothers of Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of gentle origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our, num of our number who, spent, who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed you your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have, decided, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. the nation 
Reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had massive high wall with 12 gates where the 12 angels were stationed, and on each on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were these, were three gates facing east, three north, three west, and three gates facing, or in three south and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stone as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple was the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you, 
I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be back. It's been a while since I've had the honor of doing a homily, a couple of months. So it's great to be back. First and foremost, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers for all of the clergy. And yes, I could not start a homily without looking for young people and telling the young people out there, pray for your parents. Pray for your parents. You know, when you get white hair on top of your head like I have, you will come to realize just how many sacrifices your parents made for you. And you won't realize it until you get to be a parent yourself. Just how lucky you were to have parents who loved you and who sacrificed for you. Some time ago, I, oh, maybe four months ago, five months ago, I asked the parish, I said, what would you like to hear in a homily? What are things that interest you that are important to you and that maybe you would like to hear? And, you know, you ask those questions and then you think later, why did I ever ask that question to begin with? But I got a response, I got a number of responses, and one of the responses was, you know, we'd like to hear something about what happens in your life and how you apply it to the gospel that you read to us every Sunday. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that this week. So I'm going to tell you about my week and how it applies to the gospel. On Monday of this week, I got a telephone call. And I got a telephone call from the executive director of the Iowa Bishops Conference, and he says, Joe, Thursday I want you to come to Des Moines, and I want you to serve Mass and be the deacon for the archbishop. Oh boy, I thought, wow, I'm going to be there with the archbishop. All the other bishops are going to be out there. Monsignor's going to be sitting there. This is going to be really special. And I hung up the phone and I thought to myself, you fool. Why did you say yes? You would rather take a beating than do that. All eyes are going to be on you. You don't want to make a mistake. Your bishop is there. The bishop of Davenport's there. Des Moines there. Like I said, Monsignor's there. What were you thinking? And then I reflected back to what the guy told me. Don't worry about everything. It'll all be taken care of for you. All you have to do is be the deacon. A word to the wise. When somebody tells you that everything is going to be taken care of for you, you don't have to worry about a thing, start to worry at that point. Start to worry at that point. So, Monday I start to get nervous. And I can't sleep Monday night. and. The same thing goes on Tuesday, Wednesday, by Thursday I've had enough coffee, my eyes are as big as grapefruits, and I'm getting ready to go to Des Moines, and I come here right early Thursday morning to check the epistle and the gospel for the day, out of an abundance of caution to pick up my dolmatic and my alb to take with me to Des Moines, and I get to Des Moines an hour and a half early, an hour and a half before anybody else shows up so I can make sure everything is perfect. There's nobody there. 
I'm the only one there. Everything is locked. The sacristy is locked. The altar is bare. There are no candles. There's no chalice. There's no host. There's no alb. There's no dalmatic. There's nothing ready. And I'm thinking in my voice, don't worry, deacon. Everything is taken care of. It'll be okay. About 45 minutes later, a light comes on in the door. A person comes walking in the door, and I'm thinking I'm saved. It's the archbishop. The archbishop and I are there alone, and I say, Hello, archbishop. How are you? He says, I'm tired. I got up at 4.30 this morning from Dubuque to drive over here. I'm beat. I'm thinking to myself, he's beat. I haven't slept since Monday night. So we get started. We find everything. I get the host, everything. A lady comes in. They open the office. And so I get one of the secretaries who has a key. We get everything set up. And I think to myself, thank God. Nothing can go wrong. I'm done. <laughs> I had to find somebody to read the epistle. So I get this person that I know who, who actually was in the legislature with my dad. So he's a little bit older. And I ask him to read the epistle, and he's so gracious, and he agrees. And he says, but you'll have to tell me when it's time to read the epistle. I said, no problem, I know when that is. So I'm sitting there, mass starts, got the archbishop, I'm sitting right next to the archbishop, I'm feeling so good about how things are going and myself and everything. I give the high sign to my friend, he walks up, and I'm looking straight ahead, trying to be solemn. Dead silence. Nothing is happening. And I look over and he's not at the ambo, he's at the altar. And he's at the Roman Missal looking for the epistle. And the archbishop looks at me, looks back at him and says, we haven't come out loud, we haven't come that far that a layman can say mass. So I get up and I walk over and I take him to the ambo and I show him the epistle and he finishes reading the epistle. And I'm thinking, well, that wasn't so bad. You know, it, a little rough in the beginning, but it smoothed out. So we proceed with mass. And again, we're going to mass and we get to the time of the kiss of peace. Now, you all know, in the different dioceses, we do things differently. We're not doing the kiss of peace here yet. So we're time for the kiss of peace. And I'm standing there much like this plant, looking, you know, trying to look good, not moving, my hands folded. And the bishop says, you know, let it, peace be with you, everything. And there's that dead silence again. And the bishop, and I'm thinking, this is the time for the kiss of peace. We don't do the kiss of peace. And I look over to the archbishop, and he's giving me one of these. Like, it's your turn, Deacon Joe. And so I go, let us offer each other the sign of peace, thinking this is becoming very unpeaceful. We finally get to communion, and I have a special patent laid out for all of the bishops to receive their hosts on. And as you know, we don't pass the cup here. The priest, Monsignor, and you'll see at a time, he does intinction where he touches the host into the precious blood. Only a priest can do that. And we get to that, and the, the archbishop does that. And then he hands me the chalice. Well, deacons are the, the uh, ministers of the chalice, and I take the chalice and do what I'm supposed to do, and I drink the wine. Fortunately, I leave just a little bit in the bottom, 
And that is fortunate because that special patent that I had with all the hosts that I was going to take out to the bishop, they leave it on the altar and the bishops come up and take it and guess what? They intink it in the wine. And you, if you're a priest and a celebrant, you have to receive under both species or it's an invalid mass. Fortunately, there was just enough left in that they were able to do that. So now, fast forward to those three days that I was awake, worrying about everything going right, and I was reading a book. And the book is called Unimaginable, and it's by a woman who's a New York Times bestseller author, and she talks about, uh, Dr. Joyce McGonigal is her name, and she talks about trying to see things that are going on in our life that give us an indication of what's to come. Case in point, she was working for the, uh, for the World Bank in 2010, and they asked her to put together a scenario of what she saw happening in 10 years. So she said the following things. I see a thing that we'll call the Pearl River Flu, which starts in China. It's a respiratory disease. I see fires throughout the United States, particularly on the West Coast because it's dry. I see uh, schools having to close because of this respiratory disease. I see misinformation starting by what she calls Citizen X kind of like QAnon, who was giving out false information. I see women having to leave the workforce to take care of their babies, their children, because the schools are closed. I see vaccinations being available, which people won't take even though they will save their lives. And what does this have to do with the gospel that I read this morning. Well, this is what I think it has to do. Number one, when we get so concerned about ourselves that we are not concerned about serving each other, we get into trouble. Our pride in our ego gets in front of us and we trip and we fall. We also have an opportunity in this gospel for you and I to see the future here today. You and I can see the future and this is what it is. We are going to die. And when we die, we are going to come face to face with Jesus Christ and we are going to hear those words that we heard here in May on Sunday morning at Holy Trinity Parish. If you love me, you will keep my word. If you don't love me, you will not keep my word. What are his words? Love each other. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger. What? I don't like, I don't like those words. I don't want to welcome a stranger. I don't want to welcome 18,000 people a month that want to escape poverty and disease, torture, difficulty. We have enough people here already. I don't want that. I don't want formula being given to illegals when we don't have enough formula to take care of our own children. I don't like those words. We're going to be asked those questions, I think, by the Lord. If you love me, you will do what I say and what I tell you to do, 
and my father will love you, and he and I will come and dwell with you. That's how things which happen in our life, a phone call or a book, impact the Lord's Word, that Gospel, in your life and in my life, every day, every day. God bless you and pray for your parents. We profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. <coughs> light from light, true God from true God, begotten now made, begotten substantial with the Father, to him all things are made. As men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As sisters and brothers in Christ, let us pray for the needs of the church and those of the world. For the unity of the church, may God strengthen all members to proclaim the truth of the resurrection with commitment and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders, may the gospel message encourage them in working for prosperity and peace for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, may God's healing power restore them to full health of body and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit continue to empower us in saying yes as to what God asks from us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, that they may come to share in the glory of the Father and for the intention of this Mass, Bob Derrick, Dale Albright, John Condon, Karen Reeder, David Condon. Let us pray to the Lord for the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We join in our vocation prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocation. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit invitation. Awaken in their hearts the desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our family faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious. As we entrust to your care, all who seek to do your will, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The hymn of preparation of the altar and gifts will be hymn number 534, Come Down, O Love Divine, hymn number 534. brothers and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Okay. 
Christ. The communion hymn will be hymn number 759, Unless a Grain of Wheat, hymn number 759.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is but one announcement, and that is that there will be farewell receptions after the Masses next Sunday for Father Feller. Again, his last Masses will be the weekend of June 4th and 5th. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn will be hymn number 503. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, hymn number 503.